Now at 10, a winter storm warning in effect for our mountains and valleys. We're there for you with expected storm totals and travel conditions as heavy snow continues to accumulate throughout the state. There's a cold front coming in, so we're expecting some pretty heavy snow at that time. Plus, bracing for a messy morning commute. How UDOT crews are preparing the roads as rain turns to snow. I want to emphasize that generally our schools are safe. And how can you make sure your child's school has proper safety protocols in place? What the Utah School Board of Education is saying tonight. Live, we're there for you. ABC 4 News at 10 starts now. Welcome to ABC 4 News at 10. I'm Glenn Mills. And I'm Emily Flores. We thank you for joining us on this Tuesday night. We do begin with weather. Thousands without power right now across the state due to the wild weather. We're going to take you right outside. This is a live look at Washington Boulevard at 31st Street in Ogden. You can see it's accumulating and it's accumulating fast out there. Roads covered in snow already. Visibility low in parts. Now, this storm hitting just days after our first major uh, snowstorm of the year. We do have team coverage of tonight's winter storm. ABC4's Lena Takata is live from Salt Lake City with how UDOT is preparing for the roads for the storm. But we do begin with Chief Meteorologist Lana Brophy. She's outside in the, in the elements on the uh, weather porch timing this wintry weather for us tonight. Alana. Hi, guys. We saw the rain transition to snow in Salt Lake County within the last hour, and it's heavy snow. You see it coming down on the porch, accumulating quickly. But it's not just Salt Lake County. That's a live look at Logan, where they've been accumulating snow for the last several hours. That snow transitioned around 7 p.m. Satellite radar shows you that front tracking through the state, bringing with it a swath of moisture. That heavy rain continuing in portions of Utah County, but now that colder air moving in, and boy, it packs a punch. Taking a look at that storm tracker radar. We go pinpoint and you can see that snow throughout northern Utah as well as now in the central and southern portion of the state. We've got rain down there in St. George, but wild winds continue in Washington County at this hour. We're under a winter storm warning for our northern Utah valleys as well as our mountains. It's in effect now and will hold until 11 a.m. tomorrow. That does include Salt Lake, Tooele, Davis, Cache Valley, Utah County. We know that this accumulating snow is going to cause a headache. Right now, Behind me on I-215, traffic's at a crawl. It's not a surprise because of the heavy snow and the limited visibility. We're going to take a look at the road impacts and what to expect for your morning commute. And I'll tell you how much snow will fall in your backyard. Coming up in my full forecast in just a few moments. Glenn, Emily, over to you. All right, thanks so much, Alana. Road conditions only getting worse tonight in northern Utah, making for a messy commute tonight and into the morning. ABC 4's Lena Takata joining us now live from Salt Lake City with more on what drivers need to know to stay safe out there. Lena. Glenn, it was raining earlier today, and that rain turned to snow right before our eyes. It's accumulating quickly. The wind is blowing strong. It really feels like a proper winter storm out here, and these snowy conditions are expected to last overnight, which means drivers should be prepared for a tough commute come tomorrow. With rain turning to snow, a storm like this one is difficult to prepare for, according to Mitch Shaw, a UDOT spokesperson. When a storm begins with snow, UDOT is able to put down a brine solution before the storm even arrives, helping melt the snow. But because rain just washes the solution away, the best UDOT can do is monitor the storm closely and send out a fleet of snow plows where needed. We do, though, have a team of meteorologists that are monitoring the storm, so we're going to know when and where it's going to hit. But it's not just snow the brine helps melt. The brine solution also works to melt ice. Without it, roads are more likely to ice over, causing slick road conditions. We're plow operators out and clearing the roads as best we can, but there's going to be some lingering snow likely for tomorrow morning's commute, so we just want people to, to drive safe and be, be careful out there. Shaw says when driving, it's important to leave a large amount of space between your car and the car in front of you. Make sure your car is in good working order. Make sure your tire's inflated, your windshield's cleared. Drive slower than usual. And, and pay attention and just be careful. And remember, safety is the priority. Those are good rules of thumb to follow in any storm, but for tonight, yeah, we, you know, take extra precaution. Our chief meteorologist, Alana Brophy, says we can expect another storm like this one later this week. Live in Salt Lake City, Lena Takata, ABC4 News. Thank you, Lena. Driving conditions are already dangerous in parts of the state as we speak. If you are sending us this video, 
This is a rollover up Big Cottonwood Canyon Road at Solitude Resort. Unified Police telling us the 17-year-old driver is okay. Right now, the traction law is in effect for vehicles traveling on Big and Little Cottonwood Canyons. That means chains are required for vehicles that are not four-wheel or all-wheel drive. The storm also knocking out power for many people in northern Utah. This is a live look at Rocky Mountain Power's website showing current power outages. Right now there are 250 outages impacting more than 12,000 customers. All right, and earlier today the winds were the story. Truck drivers taking extra caution on the roads as winds exceeded 50 miles per hour. Winds were heavy in Tooele County and that will continue through the night. Several truck drivers telling ABC4 that they pulled over because they didn't want to risk a rollover. Many were going to even stay the night off of exit 99 in Tooele. Truck driver Robert Gatling says it's terrifying to be driving a semi in these types of windy conditions. It would scare you. It would spook you real bad, you know what I mean? And so that's why I, I stopped here and because I thought I, my trailer was going to go over for, at first, but um, I got here and, then, uh, and this is where I'm going to stay until the winds die down. Yeah, nothing to mess with. Well, Utah Highway Patrol saying that avoid semis and trucks on the highways because rollovers are likely when winds are more than 50 miles per hour. ABC4 is there for you with continuing coverage of this winter storm. Alana's going to have the full forecast coming up in just a bit here on air. We also have the very latest online. You can find us at abc4.com. All right, switching gears. Today is the ninth year anniversary of Sandy Hook Elementary when a man shot and killed 20 children and six adults at the school. Well, in the wake of this anniversary and the school threats shutting down schools at two different Utah school districts this week, ABC4's Courtney Johns joins us live to show us the guidance Utah schools are given to handle these types of threats. Courtney? Yeah, Emily, in 2019, the legislature passed the Student and School Safety Assessment Bill. This was created, and it created the Utah State Board of Education School Safety Center. And that department has evidence based guidance for schools, but that doesn't mean the schools have to follow it. This is just some of the evidence the Utah State Board of Education School Safety Center references in its guidelines for schools handling threats. It reports 99% of school threats are not carried out. Again, I want to emphasize that generally our schools are safe. This is a look at the processes the center says is the gold standard. It has seven steps. It includes evaluating the threat, deciding if the threat is credible, determining how serious the threat is, and if necessary, implementing a safety plan. In most situations, it states the school should at least consider calling the police. But in the end, it's not up to this department. Instead, it's on your child's local education agency, or LEA. Each agency has its own plan developed for the districts within its boundaries. There, there might be different resources. There might be more of situations that arise in certain circumstances in some areas and not others. While the State Board of Education does have conditions they set for LEAs, including things like security, training, mitigation, and supporting school culture, each LEA makes the final decision. One thing that we have to remember is local control is important to our state. Parental rights are important to our state. We have to uh, leave the decisions um, to those folks that know best their communities and to give guidance from the state and offer um, a roadmap to follow and assure that LEAs are staying within those lines, but certainly to, to make that uh, decision ultimately um, to be made by those locals. All right, so what does this mean for parents? It means you should ask your school district what their policies are. And if you don't like the policy, talk to your local LEA. You can find out who your local LEA is by going to our website, abc4news.com. Back to you. All right, thank you, Courtney. Well, tonight, police officers in Ogden got training on how to deal with teenagers. Now, the Ogden Police Department and School District teamed up with Utah's Juvenile Justice Services for the training. It's called Policing the Teen Brain in Schools. Officers learned the best practices between law enforcement and youth, including de escalating interactions and avoiding use of force. Now, the goal is to foster positive relationships between law enforcement and kids. It's one of my biggest focuses is showing kids that I'm not just a police officer, I'm a person as well, and gaining their trust helps out immensely. Then they're willing to talk to you about their problems and situations going on in their lives. They'll actually ask for advice and help. 
Officers also learned how the development of the teen brain leads students to perceive things differently from adults. No attend the Utah County Sheriff's Office asking for your help finding a credit card thief posting this picture to Twitter tonight. Deputies say this person stole credit cards at Fifth Water Hot Springs in Diamond Fork. This was on December 5th. They then charged those cards at Walmart in Spanish Fork for over $37,000. If you have any information, contact the Sheriff's Office at the number on your screen. And starting tomorrow, officers will begin doing extra shifts to catch impaired drivers during the holidays. The Utah Department of Public Safety kicking off their campaign called Every Sip Has a Consequence. From tomorrow until January 1st, 18 different law enforcement agencies will conduct an extra 120 DUI shifts across the state. Officers will be looking to get impaired drivers off the road and, of course, keep everyone safe for the holidays. No 10, Utah wildlife experts stocking millions of fish into Utah's lakes and reservoirs. The Division of Wildlife Resources stocking more than 9.5 million fish this year. The DWR raises those fish in hatcheries all across the state. The goal is to help more fish survive during the extreme drought. Coming up, one police officer making sure passengers have an easy experience at Salt Lake City International Airport. We're going to meet him in tonight's Behind the Badge. And there's that live look outside at Tree Mountain, and you can see crews on the roads as snow continues to accumulate. A winter storm warning in effect, and if you look out the window, you can tell why. Heavy snow underway, how long it lasts, and how much to expect in Utah's most accurate forecast. Time now for Utah's most accurate forecast with Alana Brophy, weather rate certified 10 years in a row. All right, time now for another look at the weather, and it is wild out there. Yeah, Alana, what can we expect through the night? We knew the storm was coming in, friends, and boy, did we see those accumulations start quickly. As soon as the rain transitions to snow, you're taking a live look in Logan, where it's been snowing since 7 p.m., and you can see on the Utah State University campus, it continues to stack up, covering the sidewalks as well as the grassy areas. This storm has arrived, and it means business. It came in layers. We had wind, rain, and now the snow. We've got active winter weather alerts in effect. 
and another round of snow after we get through this one, which is going to drop decent totals. Boy, it's coming down in Davis County. Look at the benches where that snow continues at this hour. And check this out. That's thunder snow, folks, happening at Zion National Park. Wayne Craig catching that on camera. Yes, it's snowing at Zion. We've seen that cold air transition rain to snow throughout the state. Tice Wingus, 53 miles per hour in St. George, where this evening they've really seen gusty conditions. Look at Cedar City with a 66 mile per hour gust. Gusts in the 40 mile per hour range. That's why we had that high wind warning in effect. Moab now clocking big numbers. The winds creating blowing snow, which is really sloppy and impacting visibility. This is all tracking from that low pressure system that actually helped bring that atmospheric river into central California. Now that moisture has moved inland with the help of that cold front that has moved through the state. We were watching it really change. Freezing temperatures in Salt Lake, Logan. Numbers dropping in Provo. Freezing in the West Desert. This is when we're going to see that snow really accumulate on our roads. Freeze and then get heavy snow on top of it. Dangerous conditions driving out there right now. Look at that moisture moving along with the front that continues to track to the east. Let's get pinpoint. Take a look at where we're seeing all of this snow. It's filled in in northern Utah from Cache Valley all the way down to Lehigh. We still have a pocket of Utah County. Harriman was seeing thunder and lightning and heavy rain. This is going to switch over to Willow County, dealing with plenty of snow. It accumulated. Thank you, Doug, for your picture. Wendover seeing snow. I 80s messy. And then southern Utah in that mix. Delta, Milford, Joab County, those are going to switch over to snow. We know that colder air making its way through in the mountains in southern Utah. St. George getting some mixed precipitation, not a surprise. A few snowflakes will pop up, including in the higher elevations of Washington County. Diamond Valley, Dameron Valley. So that winter storm warning does include northern Utah valleys as well as our mountains, the central portion of the state, I-15 on board there, and the southern mountains. We're looking at about two feet for the high country. The purple is a winter weather advisory. All of those are in effect now. They hold until midday tomorrow, 11 a.m. So when we're going to start to see those changes. This is what UDOT concerns are when it comes to the travel impacts. I-15 is going to be a mess. The morning commute is going to be very sloppy. It's dangerous out there at this hour. And and this window of rapid snow accumulation continues. And for tomorrow morning, we're looking at icy conditions with cold temperatures in place throughout the state. Future cash shows us we're going to watch as that snow fills in. Here we go. By 3 a.m., that band of snow means business. We're still accumulating all the way down to I 70 and even Cedar City. We watch as it continues to track east. Through the morning hours, I do think we could see some lake enhancements, some snow showers in the north clearing by midday. And you're thinking, okay, high pressure's taking control. It's a brief break, folks. Here comes another storm. Yes, from Cache Valley into Salt Lake County. By Thursday morning, we get additional accumulating snow. It won't be the intensity of what we're seeing tonight and into tomorrow morning, but it will add to snow totals. And you can see that keeps active conditions. How much snow? That's the big question. Oh, it's a lot. Four to eight possible in Salt Lake and Tooele counties. And if you look out there, the accumulation happening now. Generally speaking, two to six inches for valleys throughout the state. Four to eight on the benches. Five to ten for our mountain valleys. We're going to be measuring snow and feet for the high country cottonwoods. Dangerous conditions. Mountain routes are sloppy. Two feet expected in the southern mountains. Temperatures crashing, and they're going to stay there. Daytime highs tomorrow in the upper 20s, low 30s. Below freezing in Cedar City, 40s in St. George, where again some snow will mix in for Washington County. Could see it on the grassy areas by tomorrow morning. Drier conditions in Washington County for the remainder of the work week and into the weekend. Different story up north. Those snow showers through midday tomorrow, then a brief break. Another system late Wednesday into Thursday. Snow showers want to linger into Friday, and then again a chance on Sunday. Cold temperatures dropping. Windy conditions. The morning commute is going to be very sloppy, folks. It is cold, windy, and wet out there. Stay safe. Emily Glenn, over to you. Behind the Badge, brought to you by Big O Tires. All right, people headed home for Christmas this year may plan on flying through the Salt Lake Airport. If you're one of them, you may find some snow, mistletoe, and a police officer whose whole goal is to make your day. ABC4's Brian Carlson introduces us to the cheery airport officer in tonight's Behind the Badge. When it's the holidays, airports get busy and people get stressed. If that sounds about right, at least one officer at the Salt Lake Airport makes it his goal to brighten your day. He's a refugee who came to America from an unbelievable situation. If the hustle and bustle of the holidays takes you to the Salt Lake Airport, you may meet a police officer as friendly as they can be. Good morning, how are you doing? Good. For the last 22 Good. years, Salt Lake City police officer Rand Cross has patrolled the airport on bike. Good morning. How are you? On foot. All right, you have a good trip, okay? Or in his squad car. How do you make it a traffic stop? I love it so much. I love this job here. 
It's cute. <laughs> Cross goes oh, wow. out of his way to make sure airport passengers are having a good day. Morning, how you doing? Morning, guys. How you doing? Morning. He tends to make a lot of friends. What's up, brother? Including all the airline employees. He's just fun to talk to. He's willing to help anybody else. He'll, uh, he'll take the time to address any questions that you may have. You just know that with Ron, he'll just come and assist you. He's just that helpful. He's that kind. Cross relates most with refugees coming into the country for the first time. Most of the time, they're so lost in, you know, in this world. They came from a different part of the world, just like I came. As a young boy in 1979, Cross and his family were refugees escaping the genocide in Cambodia. For weeks, they fled through the country's infamous killing fields, where more than a million of his people were massacred. You're walking, you know, on foot day and night without shoes, you know, in the darkness, in the jungle, you know. You're just hoping that, hey, you, you, you know where you're going. You, you'd be so scared, you know, thinking that well, who's going to place, you know, landmines and things like that. So mom was always telling us, hey, you know, you got to follow, you know, stay with the footsteps. His frightening journey ended flying to America, arriving at the Salt Lake Airport. Our state's beauty and modern advances left a lasting impression. When you landed, I was like, oh my God, this is like heavenly, you know. Perhaps it's why he works here today, hoping to give travelers the same heavenly experience. Every day, if Every I can like say hello to someone to make someone smile, you just say, hey, how's your day going? You know, it's, or at least just say hi, you know, and turn right, exit. Okay. You can just see the face glowing, you know. It's, it's fun. By all accounts, good morning. It seems to be working. What's up, buddy? What's interesting, when Officer Cross first flew into Utah, he spotted these big patches of white on the mountains and had no idea what it was. It was the first time he'd ever seen snow. Back to you. We love those kinds of stories. Thank you so much, Brian. Time now for a look at sports with our Dana Green. And Dana, it's been a great year for the Utes, but uh, they're not done just yet. No, the weather outside may be frightful, but Utes fans are feeling delightful because everything's coming up roses these days. Plus, BYU has touched down in Shreveport. See what I did there? For the Independence Bowl. That's next.
Time now for ABC4 News Sports with Dana Green. The BYU football team has safely landed in Shreveport, some 1,400 miles from Provo, and they're getting ready for the Independence Bowl Saturday against UAB right here on ABC4. The Cougars arrived late this afternoon. They'll have three practices before the game. They had a Nice tasty welcome dinner, Shreveport style. BYU trying to get to 11 wins in back-to-back -back seasons for just the third time ever. Many of the players never been to Shreveport, so they're soaking in that Cajun culture. Honestly, I haven't been to Louisiana before, so you know it's, uh, it's going to be a good time. You know, you know, just another game to get name to get better, put some film out there for the team, and just another, just another way to get 11 and two. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 11 and 2, Tyler. ABC4 is your home for this weekend's bowl games. The Independence Bowl kicks off Saturday at 1.30, followed by the LA Bowl between Utah State and Oregon State at 5.30. Join us Friday at 6.30 for a special pregame show, and then stay with ABC4 because we'll have a live postgame show immediately following the game. Well, the Utes have moved past the elation of winning the Pac-12 title and have turned all their attention to Ohio State and the Rose Bowl New Year's Day. With nearly a full month between the Pac-12 championship and the Rose Bowl, the Utes are getting healthy and staying sharp. Um, it's nice. You get to, the bodies get to recover for the whole team, and we just get to take advantage of it, watch extra film, and just, just kind of be comfortable and ready for the game once it comes. The Utes have played in some big games, but nothing like this. How will they not let the moment overwhelm them? You know, I don't think it will overwhelm them. We've been in some big games this year, national broadcasts on games that were very important, and they handle themselves uh, Perfectly. My guess is that uh, we'll react uh, and and not be overwhelmed by the you know the magnitude of the game. Yeah, I mean it is, it is the granddaddy of all bowl games. I think you know it doesn't doesn't really get much bigger than it, and just I'm excited for it. You know, it, it's something I've always dreamed of playing in. Just understanding the moment is not too big. You know, we, we we've been here before. It's a regular game. You know, yes, it's it's a very good opponent, but you know we believe in ourselves. We confident in ourselves, and we came this far, and we 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 ready to play. Record-setting running back Tavion Thomas grew up in Ohio, so this game is especially big for him. I watched all State since I was little, so like they always been a great team. Uh, it's gonna be a great game for us. Uh, I know a few uh, boys up there. Uh, I ain't talked to them yet. You know, I'm gonna I'm wait after that game. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to focus this game. You know? No question, Ohio State is the name brand in this game. I mean, this is the Buckeyes' 16th Rose Bowl appearance, but Utah is embracing the underdog role. I think we're a name brand too. Uh, we just won the Pac-12. So so for Utah, kind of nobody really respects us or kind of understands that we play football out here. But um, yeah, it's great. Uh, just excited to play the game. Kyle Whittingham was 10 and 1 in bowl games before losing the last two. No coincidence, though, that those two were after Pac-12 championship game losses. This time may be different. I would say there was a little bit of a hangover. We weren't quite as uh, sharp in those two games as we have been in, in years past. And hopefully, we can get back to playing our brand of football in the postseason. And Steph Curry breaks Ray Allen's all-time three-point record. He did it in the first quarter tonight against the Knicks, his 2,974th career three-pointer. Allen was actually in attendance at Madison Square Garden. What a moment for maybe the greatest shooter of all time, Steph Curry. N not bad, Steph Curry, but not to bad. be fair, they are shooting the three way more now than they did back in Ray Allen's day, but he's going to put that record so far out yes. of reach. He's got like five, six, seven, eight years left. And, and he's probably the reason they're shooting so many more threes. Change he's the changed game. the game. One of the revolutionaries of the game, no yep. doubt. All right, thank you, Dana. We'll be right back.
All right, let's head out for a final look at the forecast. Okay, guys, we're going to take a look at a live camera just to show you what's going on outside. Really rough conditions. This is Bangor Highway and California Avenue, where we've got cold ground surface temperatures, Ooh. so we're accumulating snow very quickly. Travel is incredibly dicey. On top of that, this wet snow causing some issues with power outages. I believe there's over 13,000 customers in northern Utah without power. Also seeing about 200 Rocky Mountain Power customers in southern Utah due to winds causing outages there. The morning commute is going to be messy. These are the UDOT travel concerns. You can see them there. We are going to see road snow, some freezing spots, so ice getting covered with snow. Pack your patience tomorrow morning. Please leave enough space. It is going to be messy with healthy totals. Yeah, my goodness. Thanks so much, Alana. Appreciate it. And make sure you stay safe out there. Yes, please do. Rain, snow, wind, we had it all. Good night. Stay safe.